First, loosen the cap nuts of the two clamps of the incoming pipe. The latter can then be removed. Loosen the clamps of the guiding sleeve and swing them out of the way so that the guiding sleeve can be removed. Prior to removing the guiding sleeve, note down the setting. There is a mark on the turbine housing. It indicates the settings from 3 to 9. In our example, the guiding sleeve is set to 7. The notch on the edge of the guiding sleeve should be aligned with the specified mark on the turbine housing. Apart from the guiding sleeve, the spacer rings must be removed as well. Loosen the screw of the impeller with a torx spanner and remove it. The subsequent covering disc must also be removed. If it has become stuck due to the abrasive material, the three headless screws must be loosened. They will push out the ring. Then remove the clamping disc. It holds the throwing blades in place. To this end, three screws must be loosened. Since the clamping disc may also have become stuck, the headless screws can be used once again for loosening it. In this case, however, the headless screws must be screwed in instead of out. To remove the turbine housing cover, loosen and remove the four screws. Removal of the cover. After the eye bolts with their pins have been removed, the lining material of the cover can be lifted out. In order to be able to withdraw the throwing blades, the clamping disc, which has been loosened beforehand, must be removed. If the throwing blades have become stuck due to the abrasive material, they can be loosened carefully with the aid of a rubber mallet. The installation of the new throwing blades must be performed in reverse order. As a first step, insert four throwing blades into the receiving disc. However, the two upper throwing blades would fall out. This can be prevented by pushing rubber bands on the throwing blades prior to installing them. As a result, the throwing blades cannot slip out of the receiving disc. The rubber bands remain in the machine. During operation, they will be ejected from the machine via the abrasive circuit. The headless screws must be unscrewed so that they are flush with the surface of the clamping disc. Then reinstall the clamping disc and tighten it in a defined manner by way of the torque spanner. Installation of the disc. To install the impeller, Tighten the impeller screw with the aid of the torque spanner. The pins at the back must be inserted into the matching holes. When installing the guiding sleeve, ensure that the notch on the edge of the guiding sleeve is aligned with the original mark on the turbine housing. Then attach the incoming pipe to the housing and secure it in place by pushing the two clamps over the pipe base and by tightening the screws of the clamps. In order to remove the front plate of the wear-resistant lining, loosen the clamping screw and lock nut at the turbine housing.
In order to install the front plate of the wear-resistant lining, push it into the turbine housing until it reaches the stop. The position is correct if the front plate of the lining material has the same height as the lateral lining plates in the turbine housing. Then tighten the clamping screw and lock nut at the turbine housing. Position the wear-resistant liner of the turbine cover on top and secure it in place by way of the eye bolt. Attach the cover to the turbine housing and secure it in place. The assembly does not require any special tools. Apart from standard spanners, only a torque spanner is required.